So, video games. You love them, you hate them, they're fun and relaxing at times, or they're rage-inducing pieces of garbage. However, what usually makes or breaks a game is the physics, which determines the motion and movement of objects in the game and how they interact with each other. The physics in the game must be polished to fit it. But what would these physics look like in the real world? How realistic are they? That is the point of today's video, to decipher which game's physics are the most realistic in terms of survivability, specifically explosions, uh, since explosions are cool, and why not? The games we'll be testing are Mario Kart 8, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Minecraft, to see which one has the most realistic physics in terms of survivability. First of all, let's discuss what explosions are and how they work. Explosions happen when an immense amount of force builds up and is instantly released. This often happens with a container reaching its breaking point, unleashing any built-up energy. So, to begin with, uh, let's look at the different types of explosions that can be seen throughout uh, Legend The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. There are things like explosive barrels, lightning, bomb arrows, laser blasts, and even bomb runes. There are some crazy explosions in the game, and we are going to cover the physics behind them. The two explosions that we are going to cover are bomb runes, which are capable of sending Link flying at sonic speeds across the map, as well as bomb barrels, items appearing throughout Hyrule that Link can detonate by setting on fire. So, how will we determine the uh, explosions and the force behind them? We can do that with momentum and the... Uh, the law of conservation of momentum. So, since energy builds up and is instantly released from a container, and then the breaking of the container causes an explosion, which causes things around it to be launched. So, using an in-game event, Birdman Research, the distance you travel after jumping off a tower is measured in meters, and by dropping from the top of the first step of the tower, it is measured that the tower is about 76.2 meters. By gliding from the top and measuring the hypotenuse of 205.5 meters and using Pythagoras' theorem, the horizontal distance between the tower and landing site is roughly 190.85 meters away. Using pixel measurements, it can be deduced that the map has a ratio of 0 0.45 meters per pixel. First, let's, we'll look at the most basic of explosions in Zelda, the bomb barrel. An explosive barrel that ignites when hit when hit by any type of fire. The way we'll solve this is through conservation of momentum. The net momentum before and after must be equal, so we'll be able to solve for the amount of work and or impulse done to the system. At the beginning, nothing is movement moving, so momentum equals zero. By placing a melon next to the barrel, exploding it, and calculating the distance by time to find velocity and multiplying by the ma mass, you would get the momentum of the melon during the explosion. Throughout three test trials, the average distance flown was around 19 meters across a span of, an, of on average, 1.12 seconds, giving us an average of 16.96 meters per second. Using the real-world watermelon as a substitute, substitute for the hydromelon in Zelda, the average mass would be around 14 kilograms. Multiplying the two together, you get a momentum of 237.44 newton seconds which would feel about the same as getting hit by 60 pounds of force. For reference, that is a hundredth of the force needed to break a human femur, one of the strongest bones in the human body. Moving on, we have Breath of the Wild's bomb runes, in which Link can use to perform wind bombs, a, mo a movement that involves exploding a runic bomb to launch another into Link while in bullet time, causing Link to be launched at great speeds. In this experiment, Link acts as a projectile, as this movement can only be done with him, and not including projectile motion or vertical components. Link, on average, across three trials, could be launched 132.82 meters. On average, it takes about 2.3 seconds from the start of the launch to the end, giving him an average velocity of 57.74 meters, meters per second. Since Link has no can canonic weight, uh, you can use an in-game steel scale in the Yarin Shrine, Link can be found to weigh around the same as five mighty bananas. In the game, 
Mighty Bananas are links of five individual bananas that can be cooked to create performance-enhancing, I mean, attack-boosting food. Replacing with their real-world counterparts, a single banana weighs around 118 grams, making a single ban Mighty Banana equal to one 590 grams. So Link would roughly be equal to 2.95 kilograms. However, this is also an unstable way of measuring, as Link could also be equal to the mass of a watermelon and a link of and a link of bananas, making him weigh uh, in at around fourteen point six kilograms. Multiplying his uh, mass of five bananas and velocity together, we get a momentum of one hundred and seventy point three three newton seconds. That means within that two point three seconds, momentum shoots up and back down one hundred seventy point three three newtons, which is equivalent of about three point eight pounds of force. However, if we were to use his mass with the watermelon, there would be a change in momentum equal to 843 newton seconds, which is equal to about 189.5 pounds of force. So even though Link can launch himself at speeds close to 130 miles per hour, Link himself is incredibly light, light enough to use an updraft from a small fire to glide, giving him uh, not the largest amount of momentum. However, this is a video game and video games don't often follow real-world physics. If we want to stretch the limits of what Link can actually do, including his, including his inventory to his mass, is a must. Maxing out his weapons, bows, and shield slots, and inventory for meals and materials that can be stacked up to nine, 999 of each, Link carries a hefty bag. In actuality, Link can run, jump, climb, and swim with a total of around 440 652 pounds on his back. This is equivalent to 199,876.385 kilograms. Even with this weight, Link can still perfectly do a wind bomb, pushing the limit to an instant momentum of around 11,548,000 newton seconds. This is equivalent to 1.17 million kilograms of force the same as the amount of thrust as the max settings on 202 jet engines. So, the takeaway? Video games have some dope explosions, and probably none of them are realistic enough to follow the laws of physics here. However, let's see if our next game has more realistic explosions than Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Our next game is Mario Kart, and in Mario Kart, there are plentiful amounts of explosions. From fireballs that you can throw at opponents in front of you to slow them down, and to an actual bomb which you can throw and could block other opponents that are falling behind you. However, the big the big daddy of them all is the blue shell. The main explosion in Mario Kart that draws the limelight is that blue shell, due to how much of an equal equalizer it is in a race. Because what it does, anyone who throws the blue shell, it immediately flies to the racer in first and it, it launches itself at them and it causes an, it causes an explosion thus stopping the racer in their tracks allowing others to catch up to first creating much more tension and excitement in the game the blue shell is a standard explosion that causes the racer in first to stop dead in their tracks now through using data found from the community and self and self research we can calculate the explosive the uh, the explosive potential of the blue shell in terms of impulse. So by collecting using the data, uh, the community's collected information about the game's optimal combination of character, cart, wheels, and glider, we can use that to determine the max impulse. Because if you have the max, if you combine those, you get the max velocity. For any, for any of those combinations in the game. And if you have the max velocity, you can find the max momentum and thus the, and since the impulse is the change in momentum, you can find the max impulse from there. The optimal combination of character, cart, wheels, and glider, according to, according to the community, is dry Bowser in the B dasher with slim wheels and a super, and a super glider. Using this combination is best because then, based on the community's findings, this optimi optimization produces the greatest velocity and thus also the greatest momentum as, I meant, as aforementioned. By using the, this combination of cart, 
of character cartwheels and glider to f- with the greatest to find the greatest momentum we can find the greatest impulse needed to stop that system and create uh cause that change from the initial momentum to the final momentum and since we know the final and since we know the final momentum is zero we can we need to, we just need to find that initial momentum to find that initial momentum we uh we need to find the mass of these four components and and add them all up to find the mass of this yeah of this so then we can find the change in momentum by multiplying that by its initial velocity and multiplying th- by, uh, multiple, and then just subtracting that momentum, that would be our initial momentum, from our final momentum, which is zero, and then we find the change which in momentum, which is our impulse. So, based on the Mario Kart 8 wiki, that displays the masses of Dry Bowser, the B Dasher Kart, the Slim Wheels, and the Super Glider in unnamed units, we can find that the mass of those four things added together. However, we don't know what these unnamed units represent. Could they be kilograms? Could they be pounds? Could they even be milligrams? Who knows? However, the community the community that took this upon themselves to find what one unit uh, was, how much it weighed, what was the mass of one unit. And according to them, the, the given mass of one unit is approximately 15 kilograms. Based on some math and science they did with Mario finding his mass and then using his mass in this game, which is approximately six, uh, six units. And then they found, use that to find the mass of one unit. Using that, we can find the mass of the entire four part system. Knowing that dry Bowser is nine units, we multiply that by 15 to get uh, a mass, to get a mass of approximately, well, we can just add the three, uh, the four units, the four, parts with their units separately and then multiply that all by 15. So Dry Bowser weighs nine un- uh, has a mass of nine units. The B Dasher has a mass of three units. The Slim Wheels have a mass of three units. And the Super Glider, the Super Glider has a mass of one unit. Adding that all, we get nine plus three plus three plus one, and that gets 16 units. Now multiplying 16 by 15 or 4.99, we get approximately 239.84 kilograms for that combination. And using the cannon velocity of this combination, which is approximately 180 kilometers per hour, or 450 meters per second, and multiplying that by the mass of 239.84 kilograms, we get a net momentum of, uh, we get an initial momentum of 11,992 uh, 11, kilograms times meters over seconds. And using this momentum, we can find the impulse by subtracting the f- final minus the initial. Knowing that the final is zero and subtracting from the initial, which is uh, as- subtracting the initial from it, which is 11,992, we get a- an impulse of 11,992. And this gives us the impulse of the explosion due to the uh, car, due to the blue shell. And we can compare this to something, uh, something in real life which and determine which is larger and which is more survivable. Now to compare the blue shell for Mario Kart, uh, the closest thing we thought to its explosion, explosive potential and ter- in terms of survivability would be a C4, which was commonly used in the Vietnam uh, War and is typically used by the military to this day. Now the explosive velocity of a C4 bomb is 8, 000, 8, 000, uh, 8,092 meters per second, and it has a mass of 0.5 kilograms. Multiplying those two, two, get, two together, we get a momentum, an ex, um, explosive momentum of 4,612.44 kilograms times meters over seconds. Now, comparing that to our blue shell, it's nothing. It's nearly a third of the blue shell the blue shell's explosive impulse and that the difference between those impulses since the the c4 is that's its explosive impulse that's the change in momentum it's causing to anything it goes off on the difference in those is so drastic it shows how video games the explosions of video games might not 
always might not might be cool they might be really cool ex- exciting and really amazing to look at however they're not really realistic at all and this shows it but our final game might be different than our two previous games our final game is minecraft and it's the oldest one of, of our three games being released approximately what three three 12 13 years ago yet still being a cult classic in minecraft what we want to be testing the expo- the impulse of the explosion of a block of tnt and to do that we use the community's information in our own testing through trials and such in the game so to start off we want we want to find basic information about uh steve the player character and such like that his mass and velocity and stuff according to the community uh steve's mass is approximately 490 kilograms this is coming from majority of the community the minecraft wiki and hypixel forums which is which are chat rooms of the popular minecraft server hypixel according also according to these same sources steve's walking speed is found to be approximately 15.5 kilometers an hour or 4.3 meters per second also some general information that's not really necessary to this however good to know when comparing like when comparing the in-game explosion to a real life explosion is that one block of TNT in Minecraft is one by one meter and that there are 16 sticks of dynamite in each block. So thus we can conclude that the mass of one block of TNT is approximately 1,650 kilograms using real world measurements for a stick of dynamite and such like that. And the community's number for the mass of one block of TNT is also close to 1650, uh, 1650 as well, 1,650 kilograms. I can't speak. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, now when a piece of TNT explodes, it leaves a crater of approximately seven meters long, seven meters wide and three meters deep. And this is much smaller th- than normal stick of TNT exploding, like one stick of TNT exploding, which leaves a crater with a radius, a radius of 40 meters, meaning it would have a diameter of 80 meters. That's big. That's that's much bigger than the Minecraft TNT exploding, having so and meaning that the Minecraft TNT is approximately one tenth of the actual block, like of as the explosion of one tenth of an actual block of TNT this size. That's just confusing, but anyway, let's just move on to the the explosion, the the, the tough explosions, the big explosions, the fun part. So using these numbers that we found. Uh, we can find the strength of the explosion of the block of TNT in terms of impulse by using Steve's momentum. Uh, so to find Steve's momentum, we find his velocity when walking multiplied by his mass, which is 490 times 5.3. Uh, I'm sorry, not 5.3. 490 kilograms times 4.3 meters per second, which gives us a momentum, an initial momentum of 2,107 kilograms times meters over seconds. And then we can measure the horizontal velocity of Steve uh, after the explosion of t- a block of TNT by lighting a block of TNT and then having him stand on on top of it to be launched and then placing a black a block for where we land while simultaneously timing it. So that way we can find how we can find the length from the initial from where he lands from he, where he started to where he lands and divide that by time to find the horizontal velocity to get a more and to get a more accurate result we can do three trials of this to find to get an average velocity for this so how we've set up the trial how, how we set up like the procedure for one trial is that we have this block of tnt right in front over the pair of bedrock and then we also have yeah we have a block of tnt right in front and we lay some a line of redstone and this redstone this redstone will be activated by redstone torch and what this does it sends a signal to the tnt for it to explode pretty much and yeah that's what we do there and then to find and then once we do then we would walk to it once the tnt is ignited and then wait for it to explode and after it explodes we jump it would explode and then we place a block where we land and then we're timing this whilst uh, this is going on. 
So then once we have, we have the time, we stop the time once uh, the character, once Steve lands. And then, yeah. And then we also have the block above to choose where, uh, to find where we need to place the TNT pretty much. So, yeah. So we have, we set a timer. So when the TNT starts, like when, after TNT explodes, and we stop it as soon as Steve lands to find the time. And then the distance in between those, the horizontal distance, and then we get the velocity. The horizontal velocity, which we can use to find the momentum. And here's just a quick example of this. So walk up, up, and then boom, land right there. Place a block, and then this is all while it's being timed. So we time it. And then once the block is placed down, we stop, and there you go. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And so then th this, these, this is our first trial. So we're going to demonstrate our first trial here. So you get rid of that redstone torch. Uh, let's lay out the t uh, the redstone so you can activate. And yeah, and make sure the TNT is in a good place. Okay, and let's start it. Let's start it up. Just give it a minute. Just getting stuff ready. Right, yeah, okay, good. Now let's ignite this. Place the redstone torch, quickly go, walk, then get ready that, and place. So one block behind, we landed one block behind, that's still fine. And we landed with a time of 1.12 seconds. So one block behind and 1.2 seconds. So let's grab a let's grab a sign so we can write this down it's not saying okay, let's grab a sign so we can put this down and record our results so we have for trial one for trial one we have one block one block one block yes and then that took 1.12 seconds there we go and good. And that's, oh, well, one trial works. So now let's move on to the next trial. I'm going to place the TNT and make sure it's equal with the block above. Good, good. Uh, let's get rid of that redstone torch. We'll do that in a bit. So let's line up the, that. Uh, let's get rid of that redstone torch so it doesn't activate it immediately. So we can set up the timer again. And okay, setting up the timer right now. Okay, good. We're ready to go. And boom. Oh, so there, and that time there was no horizontal change. It was just one, no, no change. So for trial two, there was no, no block, no zero, zero blocks of horizontal distance. And it took, let me see here, a 1.53 seconds. So yeah, I'm just trying to type it in here. Uh, yeah, okay, 1.53 seconds there you go now for our final trial for our final trial same thing as always let's place a block of tnt in the center make sure it's aligned with the block above and such like that good everything's good there nice nice okay now let's lay out the redstone dust so that it would, it, it's going to ignite the tnt setting up the timer and let's go Nice. That's good. That's good. We're walking. We're good. And we land. And that, even though I didn't place the block there, it's fine. That was approximately two blocks from the center, horizontally. So you can just take that and place that there for trial three. Two blocks. Two blocks. And and that took one one second, actually. One exact second. That, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> The one time I'm not trying to get all zeros on the stopwatch, I get all zeros. Like I get the, the perfect time when I'm not trying to get the perfect time. That's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, so those are our trials. Trial one, trial two, trial three. And that's the data we collected. So yeah, there we go. So now what does all this data mean? How can we utilize this data? So we have trial one, one meter, over 1.2 meter, one point, uh, one meter over 1.12 seconds, and trial two was zero meters over 1.53 seconds, and trial three was two meters over one second. So the velocities of each trial, so 
uh, can I'll be I'll explain those. So we just divide them the distance over the time to get the velocities. So the velocity for trial one is zero point eight nine two eight meters per second. Velocity for trial two is zero meters per second, and velocity for trial three is two meters per second. Adding that up, we get two point eight nine two eight meters per second, and we have to divide it by three to find the mean or the average velocity for all three trials, and that was. 0.9643 meters per second. So the average horizontal velocity launch is approximately 0.9643 meters per second based on these three trials. So using that number, we can find the impulse now. So we can find our final velocity for Steve after uh, after the explosion. So the, we can once we've, we this is the number 0.9643 meters per second. That's the explosive velocity. So using that, we can find the final momentum for Steve. So multiplying Steve's mass of 490 kilograms by that velocity of 0 0.9643 meters per second, we get a final momentum of 472.507 kilograms times meters divided by seconds. And then we can do the change in momentum, it's final minus initial, which is equal to the impulse. So if the final is 472.507 minus 2,107, and that is equal to negative 1,634.493 kilograms times, ma uh, times meters divided by seconds. So the magnitude of our impulse for the explosion, since magnitude is absolute value, we don't want a negative magnitude, that, that's not possible. For So the magnitude of the impulse of the explosion of TNT in Minecraft is approximately 1,634.493 kilograms times meters divided by seconds. So there we go. That's that. And now comparing that, we can compare that now to a stick of dynamite in real life to see which one is more destructive. And then later, after this, we can compare all three games and we can see which one has the largest explosion and which would be and like which one's the most unrealistic and we can also see if which one if this one's realistic at all as well now when comparing the uh, the impulse explosive impulse of TNT in Minecraft to an explosion of dynamite in the real world which has an explosive velocity of 6900 meters per second and a mass of 0. 0.19 kilograms Thus, a momentum of 0 0.9 times 6,900, which is equal to 1,311 kilograms times meters divided by seconds. It is clear that Minecraft does not have realistic explosion physics, just like the other two video games we demonstrated earlier, showing that all three are not very realistic. However, that doesn't matter. We can also find which which one has the largest explosion, and. I'll give it back to Jonathan to do just that. So, when comparing the explosions from all three video games to find which explosion was the largest, we find that technically Mario Kart had the largest explosion with its blue shell with an impulse of 11,992 Newton seconds. If we are excluding Zelda Breath of the Wild with Link at an inhuman max weight capacity. So, when you next play a nice game of Mario Kart with your friends, think about the destruction and damage you would cause otherwise by using a blue shell. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And hey, remember, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.